So this is our, our project. This is the environment that we've chosen to work in, and this is seagrass. And seagrass is rings the, the shallow waters around the, the Karingo National Park. Um, seagrass are actual real grasses that have evolved back into the, into the water from land. They have flowers, they disperse by seeds, they have root systems that spread out through the, through the sediment. They, because they, <coughs> they grow on bare sediment, they get colonised by very different groups of animals that would otherwise live on, on bare sediment. <coughs> so they're a, a, a real hot spot for biodiversity in, in estuary, estuaries where they, where they normally occur. By putting out these complex root systems through the sediment, they stabilise it and they reduce erosion, they protect the shoreline. So in areas where seagrass has been lost, the shoreline is more rapidly eroded than it, than it otherwise is. And more recently, it's been discovered that seagrass is excellent at sequestering carbon. And in fact, on a, on a per square metre basis, it's more effective than terrestrial vegetation in sequestering carbon uh, from the atmosphere. And even though the area of seagrass around the world is much, much less than the area of forest, the total amount of carbon that's sequestered each year by seagrass is about the same as it is for all the world's forests, forest vegetated areas. And yet that's, a, that's a, something that not many people know about. We, we know a lot and we hear a lot about coral reefs, about the beautiful um, areas of the ocean, but ecologically, environmentally, in terms of biodiversity, these are critical habitats. So this is Karawan, where we had our camp. This shaded area here in the, in the shallow shoreline here, you can see the boundary there, that's where the seagrass begins. You can see the sand, and then it goes into the seagrass, and that film that I've just shown you then was taken just around here. And it rings right around the coastal areas here and grows in these shallow areas. You can see it, the shady parts there. It prefers shallow water where there's uh, lots of sunlight um, and therefore it doesn't grow in these areas around here. It doesn't grow too deep because the waters are naturally fairly turbid around here so there's less light penetration so they don't grow into, into deeper areas. And here's another. They're, they're quite susceptible to, to disturbance, to human disturbance, and when they are disturbed, it takes some time for them to recover. And, and something like that is often an indication that there may have been excessive anchoring, for example, in, in an area like, like that. Did you want to add anything to that, Chris? No. Um, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. No. <laughs> Sorry, um, we put these slides together. We sort of played ping pong with the, with the PowerPoint presentation. I'm just now making note that um, there are so many different perspectives that we're bringing to this, and you do work from aeroplanes, mm. helicopters, mm. and um, I see. I, I don't see that. I would never have that view, and right. that's something that Bill's brought to my understanding. I was amazed when I saw. You know, that's where we got in as we swam around the seagrass, but hey, look, it goes on and on and on, and mm. it's fantastic getting mm. that broader view. Mm. Mm.